Welcome in to episode 35 of Rami and Drew. I am Rami Makloff. That is Drew Flaggy. We're a couple of Milwaukee-based comedians. We talk sports and whatever else might come to mind. And what is top of mind today, Drew Flaggy, is the Bucks and the Celtics tomorrow in a clash of Titans. And joining us now, it is my pleasure to bring in my former co-host over at Sacktown Sports. We are just a couple of guys, neither of us from Sacktown, who were hired to talk about the Kings when uh, really what we wanted to be talking about, Nick, was the Bucks, myself, <laughs> respectively, and you, the Celtics, respectively, as you are. You are a lifelong uh, Boston area native, right? Is that a good way to put it? You always corrected people when they would say you were from Boston because you're from Providence, correct? I'm from Rhode Island, yes, East Providence. Rhode I, I okay. want to make sure that people know that. And by the way, Rami, if you could see, I'm actually allowed to wear a Boston hat during this uh, <laughs> during this podcast. Drew, it was uh, it was kind of a sticking point for Nick on our way out <laughs> in Sacramento that I didn't really get a hard time for wearing my Bears and Cubs and Buck stuff, and uh, Nick Nick was foreboding from wearing any any Boston stuff yeah. for our YouTube viewers. Yeah. in Sacramento. Is there something in history that I don't know a lot about where there's like a Boston Sacramento feud? No, no, not not that I'm aware. No, no, <laughs> that's no. not that I know of. No, not that no. I know of. You wear a um, but, Sox hat? They, do they just hate baseball there? Is that the problem? Uh, I, I don't know. I can't tell you what the problem was. All I know <laughs> is I was pulled into an office and told to wear less Boston stuff. So, and less meant pretty much none. So, okay. Yeah, that is, that's pretty much what it, that is pretty much what it meant. And Nick is now back in the, uh, the Boston at Foxborough, right? You're, yeah. Yeah, they're in the home of uh, the New England Patriots is where you landed. And he's hosting the uh, the Nick Cattle show where he talks Patriots and, and Celtics and uh, and Red Sox, as you can see by his hat there. And we thought we'd, we'd get Nick in today to talk a little bit about the Celtics before we get into tomorrow's game. Uh, the the view from from afar on what went on, because I know you you follow the NBA as closely as you actually the two of you follow the NBA as closely as anybody I know in terms of watching games outside your market. I know you were following what was going on with the Bucks here, Nick. What what were your thoughts when it was at its most chaotic and they were changing coaches with 30 some games left in the season? Honestly, it was a lot of the questions that I had before the season tipped off. I mean, I, I thought Milwaukee would be a top two or three team in the East, just like everybody else did. But I did question the fit right away of, of Dame Lillard as far as defensively because, you know, he hasn't shown to be very good on that end of the floor. So I, I thought they got weaker defensively. I, I had questions about their bench. And I had questions about the coaching situation because uh, you, you don't really know what you got until you got it, right? So uh, to me, it kind of all came to fruition. I wasn't too surprised. I was surprised how quickly things were done with the coaching situation. Uh, I was surprised they went with Doc Rivers because of his putrid postseason record since he left here, Boston. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think many of the questions I had, Rami and Andrew, were, were some of the things that uh, many people were, were questioning about the team, I would imagine. Yeah, probably. I mean, that's, that's about what it was here. Um, watching from up close, Damian Lillard's defense has gotten better, and shockingly, Malik Beasley's has gotten a lot better. Like, but like what Adrian Griffin was trying to do was, I don't know if you noticed, it was this weird overplaying blitz type defense where they were just throwing a bunch of guys at the ball, trying to jump passing lanes and cause turnovers in transition. But you obviously have seen us play the Celtics enough times. We're not a fast team. We're not a get out and run team anymore. Middleton's not that guy. Lopez has never been that guy. It's, it's basically Giannis against everybody. Yeah. And Whatever, like so, like they they wanted he was coaching a defense for a team that he didn't have, like the personnel he didn't have. If he wanted to implement that on a team like say Oklahoma City, it would probably work. It's just it's for a young team with young legs. It's not for it's not for a veteran team. Yeah, to me, it's like the coach comes in, and he says, "Okay, well, what what do you want? What do you want? Well, we got to pay. We got to play with pace. We got to play with pace. Well, how do you get pace? Well, we got to turn the basketball over. How do you do that? Well, you jump passing lanes, you get extra aggressive." And you overcompensate for the lack of ability in some spots to go, you know, one on one, albeit athletically or size wise. And so it kind of caught up with you guys. I agree with you, though. Obviously, I mean, watching Milwaukee as much as I have over the past few years because of the boss Milwaukee thing, I, I always, the, the thing that jumped out at me beyond the obvious, Rami, is you know, with the Giannis stuff, which is, again, the obvious. 
just the size, you know, the, the size of the team with, with Lopez in the middle. Middleton's not a small guy. Giannis is obviously a beast. Uh, it, it was that size. It was Portis coming off the bench, who's just a pain in the ass. Love love the guy if you play, you know, if he plays for the team you root for. Can't stand him if he plays for the opposition. But, uh, you know, just that size and, and physicality is kind of what I always thought of Milwaukee when I think about them, especially defensively. Yeah, and it's funny. I when when they when they were when they fired Adrian Griffin, and before you know, for like three hours, it wasn't uh, Doc Rivers yet. We didn't know who it was, and we were kicking around names, and we were like, hmm, maybe you bring back Budenholzer. And really, some of the thi- like we said it sarcastically, Dick, but some of the things that they've done defensively are exact. Like they 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 probably lifted it straight from the Budenholzer plan. So it's funny that they just went back to what was working under the old coach (laughs) in in a lot of ways. How much of the, because they've been better since the all-star break. They came out with like a six game win streak, I think. And now, now now they're 500 in their last six. If I have that right, how much of the, the turnaround do you, do you think is, is, is for real and, and, and shows the, the job that doc rivers has done here so far. And you know, doc rivers well being a Celtics fan. Yeah. Look, doc Doc is, you know, he's, somebody who tries to motivate his guys, right? He back in 08, it was the whole Ubuntu thing. He, he's a, he's a pretty damn good communicator. Uh, he'll get the guys to play for him. I don't think he's necessarily strong in, in, in some aspects of, of coach. I don't think he's necessarily super strong X's and O's all the time. Uh, the thing that always drove me crazy about doc is his incapability of, taking any count of a, any kind of accountability. And I think you guys, have, you saw that early on when he took over, it was like, oh, well, you know, what do you expect? Uh, and, and I think sometimes that, that kind of creeps into the team and, and it starts to create excuse making. And, you know, all the teams that he's had since the Celtics, it, it's just seems like they're always looking for the first excuse to get out the back door. And I'm not saying Milwaukee's going to do that, but, uh, I think it says a lot. He's just been out coached in playoff series. So I think regular season, you get through, you know, night in, night out, the travel and all of that, you can deal with that. But Rami, as you know, and, and Drew, you know, as a basketball fan, you get to the postseason and things are different. It's a seven game series. Mm-hmm. These teams know you inside and out. And it's going to be up to Doc to be able to, not not against the teams that are, you know, below you guys. You, got, you guys should get at least to the second round, if not Eastern Conference Finals. It's all about hey, if you're if you're sitting there against the Celtics and it's the Eastern Conference Finals, is Doc going to be able to counter the counters? Because he's had some issues with that, and and I think that will be unproven, unfortunately. Much like the Celtics stuff that we talk about here, the final ninety second offense in tight games, it, it's not going to be proven until you get there and you show that you can do it. So I think it's now up to Doc to prove it that he can do it in a postseason against a better team. My uh, my big thing that Doc needs to do is, and the Bucks need to iron this out fast. Early in games, we are really careless with the ball. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter if it's Giannis, if it's Dame. Middleton's been out for long enough that you can't really throw him on this one. But even like Pat Beverly coming in, we've had games where we come out, get possession of the ball, and we just try to force something inside really quick and just throw the ball off of our own guy's chest. <laughs> It's like it's like dropping back in the pocket, spiking the ball off your center's helmet. It's look, man. Like why? And that's that's how we fell behind against Sacramento a week ago. Just dumb turnovers early, and you never got back over the hump because they just ran you out of the building. And see that you see that with a little bit, Drew, with the with the Celtics too. I mean, you see, you know, look if you look at it statistically, they're okay with turnovers. I think they're about 12, 13 a game but they've had some sloppy stretches as well where you're just like scratching your head. They'll have a quarter where they have seven turnovers and all of them are pretty much inexplicable. So I, I've seen those stretches too from the seas. Uh, as far, I'll oh, go ahead, Drew. Sorry. I promised Rami I was going to be nice because I like to shit talk Jason Tatum a lot. Like he's my oh, go ahead. <laughs> have at it. Have he's at my favorite. <laughs> I just like to, I like to get the belt out every day and I just, I like to just slander him. Um, (laughs) the, the big thing with me is like what the Celtics actually remind me of this year is uh, three out of the five years that the Bucks were the one seed is they've blown out how many teams this season. And then when it gets to close games, do they have the character to close it out? Cause we really screwed this up a bunch of times, 2019 fine for the Bucks. You lost to the Raptors in some dumb way. And you should have beat them, but that was the first time you made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. 
whatever. You lost to the champs. Kawhi was insane that season. But then the other two times, it's like, what are we doing out here? And we were blowing teams out. All you were a great regular season team, great point differential. And now I'm looking at the Celtics. I'm like, are they going to do the exact same thing we did? Because the team that worries me for the Celtics, honestly, it's Cleveland. If Cleveland's the three seed second round, I think Jared Allen and Mobley give them a lot of issues. And Porzingis can't snake his way behind on those Drew Holiday post-ups. And that switch that J.J. Redick loves, it's going to be tougher on them than it would be for any other team. Yeah, I mean, look, look, Cleveland's Cleveland's good. But what I would say is, can their can their defensive backcourt hold it together uh, against the Celtics? When you talk about Derek White, Drew Holiday, guys that have been there, Derek White's playing at another level this year. You know, you got Garland and you got Mitchell, and and Mitchell's a, a pretty good defender when he wants to be. Is he going to want to be forty eight minutes, seven games? We'll see. Uh, and you know the Mobley Allen thing. I, Look, that it could be an issue because one of the biggest problems for the Celtics this year in stretches, again, when you when you dominate the way they have, and, and you've seen it with Milwaukee, you just mentioned you know, the three years that you guys just ran through the competition, you're really nitpicking, right? But there, there are stretches where their defensive rebounding is atrocious, and, and that's been the case for the last couple of years. But we I've seen several games this year. They give up 15, 16, 17 offensive rebounds. They're giving up 20, 25 second-chance points. So against Mobley and Allen, if those guys are crashing the boards, then you might have some issues. Now, I do think there are things that they can do that will bother Cleveland. I do think Porzingis' uh, versatility could could bother them sometimes. Uh, I think the pick and roll is, you know, the pick your poison kind of deal. And and look, Mobley is a very, very good defensive player. Allen's pretty good around the rim. Uh, you know, they're, they're mobile big guys. But I, I do think there are things that the Celtics can do that will bother them. As far as, you know, the season, their offense, look, it's the same conversation, Drew, same conversation, Rami, that, that Boston's been having for years. And you go back to the 22 finals, they fell apart in the finals, you know, up 2-1. Their offensive execution was awful in the final moments in pretty much every game in that series after they got up 2-1. And we've seen bits and pieces of that this year. Now, I will say there have been a lot of games that, you know, if you're not watching and you just see, oh, the Celtics blew out a team by 20 or they won that game by 15, they won the, there have been games where the Celtics have taken a haymaker and come back in the fourth quarter and then run away from the game. So they win by 10. So it doesn't look like it was as tightly contested, if that makes sense. I remember a game against Philly going back a few weeks ago. Philly punched back and they got within two. And the Celtics were like, okay, it was, it was time to kick it into that gear. I, I still think, though, and it's going to be one of the questions that are not answered until we get there, like I said. Tatum, as great as he is, and you know, as, as many things as he does very well, he is a much better playmaker now than he's ever been. He's a much better decision maker as he's ever been. Uh, he is a much better defender, one through four, than he has ever been. But it gets down to the final minute and a half. And if the game is a two-point game, three-point game, four-point game, he grew up with Kobe as his mentor, as the guy that he looked up to. Yeah, he still texts him. We've talked about that on the show. Yeah. He still texts him. It's and there hilarious. are times, Rami, there are times, there are times, uh, you guys, there, there are times <laughs> that uh, he goes into Kobe mode. And it's, I'm going to dribble the ball. I'm going to dribble the clock out. I'm going to wait till about four or five seconds. Then I'm going to make my move and take a tough contested jump shot a la Kobe in the mid-range, 18 feet. Sometimes it's a pull-up three that's contested instead of just running the offense, and, and they do that. So that's going to remain a question until you get there and we see them actually react the way they should react, which is move the ball, maybe put them in the post, depending on the matchup, get a better shot than that. We've we've talked on the show about how like Bucks fans – a lot of them can't really seem to enjoy this season and and until if and when they win a championship, like even when Why they win games, I, I don't know, even when they win games, people want to nitpick and find things wrong with it is, is, yeah. is, is the vibe in, in Boston and among Celtics fans kind of like, yeah, you can win games in March, but show me something in the playoffs is, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, is that, what is that? What is that little Fugazi accent you're throwing at? Me? <laughs> or, or are you guys, are you guys enjoying this? Because it's been a really good regular season, man. Like they're just, they're just running through the East right now. Nobody's really even close to them in the standings. I, I think you have 
two sections of Celtics fans. You've got the Celtics fans who are just in awe of what this team is doing. And look, Rami, you know me well enough. I, I always try to take the 30,000 foot view on, on pretty much everything. Right. Mm-hmm. I can tell you, this is the best Celtics team that I have seen easily since 08. And I, I would say they're probably better than 08 because they have more versatility in 08 than 08. But that's also because the game has evolved, right? You know, just everybody can shoot and stuff. So it's a little bit different comparing the teams 16, 17 years later. This is the best team I've ever seen um, as far as the Celtics go. Because I was, you know, 86, I was too young to to appreciate that, right? 81, I, I was just here. 84, way too young. So, you know, I, I compare every team to 2008. And this team, to me, they got to win it. But this team is more dangerous than 20, you know, 2008. Because they just have so many guys that can beat you in so many ways. And their versatility you know, you guys know Holiday well enough and what he brings to the table, right? He'll take the occasional, don't take that transition three, Drew, but he's going to take one or two of them every game where he just, you know, can't help himself three seconds into the shot clock. I'm jacking it up because I'm just going to do it. There's going to be the occasional Drew Holiday sloppy turnover. Um, but you know what Drew brings to the table. But Porzingis has opened up this offense in so many different ways. They, they never had a post presence. They never had anybody that could play with their back to the basket. Even Al Horford, he, that's not his strength. It was when he first came into the league, but now he's totally a stretch big. So, you know, when you look at Porzingis and the post element, this team is, you know, one of the top teams in basketball when it comes to, you know, posting up a- as much as they do. Their frequency, their post-up frequency is up there. Their post-up efficiency is up there. Their points per possession is way up there. They are incredibly efficient and good posting up. And that has not been the case since Tatum and Brown have been here. And a lot has to do with Porzingis, but also Tatum is more open to the idea of posting up than he's ever been. Jalen Brown has been pulling out straight up bully ball since the all-star break. Since the all-star break, this is the best Jalen Brown I've ever seen on both ends of the floor, both ends of the floor, focused, playing physically, understanding who he is. Uh, He's much better with his rim reads. So uh, this is a really good team. So I think people are, are loving that, but there are people. There are people, and even me, I'll sit back and I'll say, look, it's been great. But it's all about the championship this year, and and that's where they're at. It's championship or it's bust. And if they lose in the playoffs, this will ultimately go down as a failure, Rami, even if they win 60, 65 games and run through the first rounds, the first couple rounds of the playoffs, it'll still be seen as a failure. Well, that's how it was last year for us, too. It was we had a great record, and you go out in the first round, which I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, Miami was the eighth seed. Were they? It was the same squad that was the one seed the year before that. So I'm not going to sit there and really shame the Celtics or us for losing that series. I think the Bucks overlooked them and the Celtics got worn down. Uh, but like that, the thing that bugs me about Bucks fans is this literally with payroll and everything is the best team you're ever going to have in Milwaukee. Yeah. We're never going to buy a Giannis. We're never going to swing another trade to get another Damian Lillard. This is it. So for the next three years, just fucking enjoy it. That's all I want. I'm like, (laughs) this is fun. I hope I'm not going to look at this year as a failure if we lose because of all the crap that happened. But like, if you don't win one in the next, in this three year window, probably two years with Lopez on the, on the roster. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is a failure. But it doesn't mean it's not fun right now. And I get annoyed by the people who, after every game, hate Damian Lillard or Giannis <laughs> ruined the team by playing GM or Chris <laughs> Mitchell. What does he bring? Like, that's every day with us. Nick, yeah. Nick, Drew, Drew makes the mistake of going to the dark corners of the web where oh, Bucks yeah. talk. I'm, yeah. I'm talking about Bucks talk. I'm not talking about the other dark corners of the web. But not he has, he, <laughs> yeah, he, go, he goes, he goes to some dark corners of, of, of the Bucks talk web out there. And I'm like, dude, you just, it you looks like need... a dark corners guy. Not to, not to, you know, give you yeah. any kind of judgment, but you absolutely, <laughs> if I was, if I was writing a screenplay, you would be the dark corners guy yeah. on the script. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, what, what does 4chan have to say about the Orlando magic? That's, that's where I, <laughs> even like the dark room with the TV light that's flashing on your face every once in a while. It's kind of creepy. Yeah. Oh, he's gambling. He's gambling. He has to have the game on. You know what I mean? He needs, he needs to see how the parlay is. Or he it. It. He's, got, he's got his laptop out. He's got his phone out. He's got the TV. He's got multiple TVs. I'm calling my 
for a loan right now. <laughs> You're losing your shit right now on the first four in, like the, the, the first four of the NCAA tournament. You're shitting your pants. I can, I can see it. I can University see it. of Santa Barbara's not going to cover the spread, guys. <laughs> I'm ruined. Jesus, what's going on with PC and BC in the NIT right now? What, what, oh what's, I need it. I need, what's the live spread? What's the live spread? I already said I, if I lose if I lose a five dollar bet, well, I guess the food in the refrigerator is not for me tonight. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we got to save that cold air. <laughs> but here's here's the difference, though. Here's the difference. What we were just talking about, Drew. You guys have the championship, right, with Giannis. So I, yeah. I think if if Celtics fans could look back at 2022, for example, and say, well, they won one, I think they'd feel a lot different, many of them. But until they get that with Tatum, and I've been saying this, you know, Tatum, and I know LeBron, of all people, Rami, you know how I feel about LeBron. But, you know, LeBron came out recently, the last couple of days, and said, look, he thinks Tatum is elite. And his point was, look at how many conference finals he's been to. He's been to a finals. He just turned 26. And I think that's the part where I, I kind of hang my hat on, is when you look across the league, whether it's Giannis, whether it's Jokic, whether it's LeBron, any of these top players, any of these generational-type guys, MVPs, they usually win their first chip at like 27, 28 years old, unequivocally. You can you can look across mm -hmm. history of like the past 30 years, and usually the first championship of that best player, the guy's around 27, 28. And that's what LeBron's point was, is, hey, he just turned 26, and he's already done all of this. So I still think, you know, we get we get caught up, you know, into the dark corners of the, uh, of the web, and we get into these conversations and these social media circles, and, you know, and, and we tend to go crazy, every single day of every single week of every single month and every single year about something. But in the big picture, he has accomplished a lot for a guy who just turned 26. And now it's the most difficult step. It's the step. I remember talking around me about this in Sacramento. It's the step that Giannis had to take, right? Okay. He he's, he's on another level than like 99% of the league. But if he wants to get to that top half percent, if he wants to get to that top three or four, he inevitably has to, you know, past that threshold he has to get to that next level mm -hmm. and for jason the next level is winning that championship just like it is for this team um as far as this game goes tomorrow nick drew and i were talking yesterday about Giannis. he's dealing with a lot of nagging injuries he sat out their 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 last game on on sunday and i said i'm baby. fine with them i said i'm fine with them playing the load management game with him Giannis is a baby <laughs> I'm, but I, maybe, but I'm, I'm okay with them. Toe hurt? You got a big yeah, toe big, problem? What's wrong? It's actually, his, it's actually his pinky toe. But I'm oh, okay with them playing the load management yeah. game. And Stop. Drew, Drew, Drew said he was okay with it too, but he wanted to see him against the Celtics. And Drew, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm kind of reading between the line between the lines here. I think you were kind of saying measuring stick game against against the Celtics here. Last time you're going to see him, right? No, we got one more. I think later oh there is there is one more okay yeah but, back here but and, and, no, it's measuring stick because right now the celtics for the most part are all healthy they held everybody out i think they're throwing everybody out there tomorrow so i'm looking at this I are you looking at this as a measuring stick drew or no yeah or it's, it's nick a, i meant nick i'm sorry nick are you oh. looking at this as a as a measuring stick game he shouldn't i mean uh... Is there anybody else in the East that scares you? Because to me, and I think to Drew, it's Bucks and Celtics and everybody else. Well, it's, I, I, look, I, I think if the Celtics play their best, nobody scares me, uh, I, even Milwaukee. I mean, if this team plays at its top level on both ends of the floor, what's that? So them's fighting words. Uh, I'm just telling you that if, I mean, if you look at point differential, if you look at every analytic and every statistic, this team is literally one of the best teams that's been on the floor in, in, in the last 20 years in the NBA. So if they play at their very best, they beat every team in the league in a seven-game series just because I think they're the most talented team, one through six, one through seven. So if they play their best, now because of what I've seen in the postseason, Miami series last year, finals in 2022, then, yeah, the Bucks are right up there with any other team that I would say that that has at least, you know, the chance of of walking into a playoff series unless the Celtics totally puked on themselves early on, which I don't anticipate could always happen. But yeah, I mean, I, I think the Bucks that game is always one of those games where you say, all right, you know, 
it's like the Denver game going back a couple of weeks ago. You look at a few select teams and you say, this is kind of a litmus test. And, and I think Milwaukee is in that group. Absolutely. I mean, Philly without Embiid, whatever to them. Uh, Cleveland, to Drew's point, I think Cleveland's an interesting matchup, but I would take the season of seven-game series against them. So, you know, I, I do think the Celtics will want to try to send a message tomorrow night. Will they be able to do that? Who knows? I, I have no idea. And I, I think it's more of a test for us than it's like if we beat the Celtics tomorrow, I don't see that as being like a we're punching our ticket to the finals. It's like, all right, now we know what we can do against a very good team. Because really, I've been measured, I've written off the entire beginning of the season with Adrian Griffin and how just awful our defense was. Yeah. Nobody they were supposed to be doing. They weren't even running sets that Damian Lillard ran in Portland. And Doc was like, why the hell are you guys not running the things that Dame was good at? And it's like basically Adrian Griffin, he got into a fight with Terry Stotts. I don't know if you know about all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that whole situation where like Stotts ran. I was like, yeah, because Stotts wanted to implement all the stuff from Portland that he taught Damian Lillard how to do. And Adrian Griffin didn't like having a shadow government tell him how to coach. So then he was like, screw this. I'm 70. I'm getting the hell out of here. I don't want to deal with this guy. And now it's like Doc's like, well, we're going to start doing shit that annoyed me when I had to play against you in Portland. He's like, I, he had to play against Damian Lillard for how many years, how many games? And he's like, just do that stuff. And then they're like, because Adrian Griffin basically reduced Dame to a role of, all right, you're going to actually play with Giannis for three quarters, and then we're going to let Damian Lillard be a foul merchant and try to win it from the free throw line at the end of the game. See, I think, I think the, challenge, the challenge for Milwaukee is, matchup-wise, man, oh, man, I, I – I know you said Beasley's playing better defensively, but on the wing, you know, obviously Giannis is Giannis, but I think Porzingis is going to pull Lopez away from the rim, which will which will affect will impact Lopez's defense and and not have him as the rim protector. I think Porzingis will pull him out every every single possession, so I think that'll be a problem. I think I think Damian is a big problem, and I know look, he might be playing better defense now. You get to the playoffs and guys want to pick on matchups and you got Damian on switches against Jalen and Jason and Porzingis and Holiday and even Derek White. I don't like my chances if I'm Dame, which is going to inevitably bring a double team. And if if you're in the position of having double consistently against the Celtics, they're going to kill you. They're going to kill you because they're going to find the open man and all five guys in their starting five can shoot. So, you know, that's what I'd be looking at. Middleton as well. Middleton is not the same guy he was two or three years ago. So again, I think I think the Bucks certainly have a chance if they if they play in the playoffs this year against the Celtics. But I'm just trying to hit the trouble spots for you guys. Like if I'm if I'm Doc, I'm very concerned about my defense standing up against what the Celtics can do with their versatility. Because I, I just don't know how you can consistently slow down the five guys that the Celtics will have out there offensively against some of those guys defensively they'll be looking at. I just, I think I, my guess, and this is what they did to Steph Curry this year. If you go back to 2022, they never attacked Curry. It drove me bananas. They never posted Curry. They never made Curry defend one-on-one -on -one against their wings. It was a disaster. They, they, they initiated their offense 25 feet away from the bucket. They played into the hands of Golden State. When they played the Warriors a couple of weeks ago on national TV on that Sunday game, and look, that's an aberration. Okay, they're up by like fifty at half the. That's yeah, outrageous. they're not going to win. All, they're not going to win every game by fifty. You don't think? No, 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 no. Okay. no. But but what they did was in that game though is that they went after Curry, and as soon as Curry was on Jalen, boom, we're posting you. As soon as he was on Tatum, I'm posting you. It, Drew Holiday, I'm posting you. And so I think Dame's going to have to fight that. Every possession, they're going to try to get a mismatch on Dame. And they're going to say, look, you're going to have to double us and give up a wide open shot. Or you're going to let Dame suffer one on one against our wings. And A, he's going to give points up. And B, he's going to be tired by the third quarter because Dame is not going to be able to physically handle Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum. So I think that's where Milwaukee's going to have to figure something out. Their, their rotations are going to be have to have to be unbelievable. They're going to have to contest shots at a high level. They've got to help Dame early. They they need ball pressure. 
you know, your pickup points have to probably be higher against the Celtics to pressure the ball more so they can't get into those sets and get Dame into a mismatch in the post. But I, I think those are the things that Milwaukee is going to have to face. And, and for the Celtics, it's, you know, again, the size and, and having to slow down Giannis and, and Dame and the pick and roll and pick and pop and, and those things. And and that's a challenge. I think the biggest thing that we're going to have to do is get, I mean, I think the Bucks are going to be playing with a nine-man rotation in the playoffs. Because we're going to be throwing, I think, Pat Bev, Pat Connaughton, Jay Crowder, and Bobby Portis out there and just rotating guys in and out. And Doc has experimented with having Giannis, Portis, and Bobby out there at the same time. So just trying to outsize people for a little bit and then slotting Middleton into the two and just having Dame out there. Like, that's, that's I think, the way that they neutralize at least the switches with Jalen Brown. That's Because you're going to have to have Middleton get off of Tatum and slide Giannis onto Tatum. That's the way that they're going to have to do that. Yeah, and yeah, but that's going to be it, hard anyways. And it's going, and that's, and, and that's why the, the Porzingis stuff. I, I can't stress it enough how, how much he has changed this team because he's the X factor. Off, he he is the difference. He is the impact guy. We can talk about Brown. We can talk about Tatum, but the difference between this Celtics team and other Celtics teams. And again, they're beatable and they might fail execution wise late in games. They might turn it over. I'm not saying that they're, you know, they're flawless and they're going to run through everybody. I'm just saying that the difference between this team and other teams that I've seen is they have the ability to say to themselves, all right, we're, we're in a tough three to three and a half minute stretch offensively. Let's dump it to Porzingis and let him go to work. And, you know, he's going to draw a double team or he's going to shoot over somebody or, and so, that ability to go to him, I, I think you know Brooke is going to do a fine job against Porzingis. I, I honestly believe that he'll he'll be he'll be good. He'll be better than a lot of people against Porzingis because he's such a good defensive player. But I I still think that you know I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Celtics defend Lopez with Holiday from time to time. They defend Giannis with Holiday. They defend Giannis with Derek White, and people might be like, really. Yeah, I saw Derek White one-on-one -on -one the other night with Yusuf Nurkic in, in the box, and he straight up blocked Nurkic's shot. He has blocked power forwards and centers consistently this year, one-on-one. -on -one. Derek White is a tremendous defensive player, uh, one through five at times, depending on the matchup. So I agree with you, Drew, as far as, you know, they'll probably have to put Giannis on Tatum. The thing is, for the Celtics, they don't have to expend that energy defensively by putting Tatum on Giannis every possession, right? They can right. say, okay, we'll, we'll try Jalen for a possession. Holiday, White, Horford, who's had some success against Giannis from time to time. Porzingis. Porzingis will get bodied a little bit because he's not ultimately physical. But So that that's, that's the thing is the Celtics, they don't have to rely on Tatum to be the Giannis stopper and score 30 on the other end. They, they, can, they can mix it up a little bit more. Nick, I know uh, you, you told me you had limited time. We've already run past that limited time. I just wanted to quick before we let you go. I follow you on Twitter still because I love you. He's I follow at Nick you C. too because I love He's you. At Nick C. He's at Nick C Radio. And uh, <laughs> I see your, 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 your thoughts on the Patriots. They haven't really done anything in free agency, but you seem okay with that. Like they, they got rid of Mac Jones. They got rid of Bill Belichick and then brought back a bunch of dudes from, from what I've gathered. Yeah, look, the way I look at it is this. My, my slogan for the offseason, it's not sexy. It might be catchy. It's just get better. How about that? They just they just got to get better at, at so many spots, Rami. Like th this team, you're walking into an offseason <laughs> off a four-win year, okay? You're rolling with a rookie head coach. You're rolling with a lot of a, a rookie defensive coordinator at the NFL level. You have no quarterback to speak of. You have no starting offensive tackles. You have no wide receiver one. You had no tight ends walking into the offseason. This offensively, and I know I talked to you a lot about your Bears, but this offensively was as bad of a roster as you could imagine going into the offseason. So I'm not surprised that they have not successfully been able to add a top left tackle and, and get somebody like Tyron Smith because Tyron Smith looks at it and he says, I'll go play with Aaron Rodgers for a year. I'm 33 years old. I want I want to try to win a championship. You guys won four games last year. Why do I want to live in New England? Nobody <laughs> wants to live in New England, right? So you so just I, moved there. 
Well, I mean, from the outside world looking at okay. you know, if, you're, if right. you're an NFL player, you know, sure. I don't think any guys in the NFL are like, you know where I want to go? Foxborough, Massachusetts, baby. Give me that shit all day. I heard about the clubs at Foxborough. <laughs> so my thought is this. They've upgraded the wide receiver room. They've upgraded at quarterback because Mac was so bad last year. They've upgraded at tight end. Um, I'm just not. I'm not willing to sit here and say that the offseason has been a disaster until May 1st because the fact is they have the draft and you know they can utilize the draft in multiple ways Rami they they can make a trade you know if they want a wide receiver one could they go out there and trade for T Higgins could they trade for Brandon Ayuk if he's available you know can they go out there and get one of those guys and you know inevitably it comes down to the draft and what they do at 3 which I think Looks like right now it'll be a quarterback. If you hit on the quarterback, then, you know, I think many people feel great about this offseason. But what I push back on is this idea that they haven't spent money. They've spent money. It's just they've spent money to retain guys. They they spent $40 million yeah. guaranteed on Michael Packers, Wenner. Packers fans are used to that line. Yeah. Packers, well, yeah. Packers fans know that line well. I, I think I think I'm going to have a lot in common with Packers fans moving forward. <laughs> Wolf the guy. I do, I do. But this is look. This is a two or three year rebuild. You know, this is a two year, two or three year rebuild. They they can they can patch sure. it up at, at left tackle. Um, you know, but I, I'm just look. Are you going to pay Calvin Ridley 55 million guaranteed? I'm not. I mean, I, I wanted Calvin Ridley, but am I going to pay that dude 55 million guaranteed? No. And so, with the options they had. And what they have to sell, it's not like there was a, 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 you know, make it, you know, fix it quickly kind of strategy here. And, and for people yeah. thinking that they were going to be able to walk into free agency and land whoever they wanted, those people were delusional. Now that yeah, was the whole. They're still thinking. They're still thinking this is the dynasty Patriots that, yeah, that would be very Brady. appealing to free agents. They're you not. Yeah, they're not. They're not as appealing. You can go to Tyron Smith and you can say, hey, man, you want to play for a, a year for us and plug this left tackle hole? Sure. I want to play with Tom Brady and, and have a shot at a championship. Hey, Calvin, do you want to take a similar deal in New England as you will in Tennessee? Sure. I'll go play with Tom Brady and have a chance to win a chance. You don't have that anymore. So it's, hey, do you want to come join a four win team with an unknown coaching staff? And, uh, you know, and Fox and the worst Pro, and the worst Pro. winners in, in America. Just a couple of comments before we let you go, Nick. Our old buddy, uh, Megadeth Knight, says, Oh, man, this is great vibes. Oh, yeah. Miss you guys. He was one Megadeth. of our listeners out in Sacramento. Uh, there's always going to be a little hate when you come in, you know, to preview the opposition. Q says, This guy sounds like the male version of Doris Burke. You know what's LOL. funny? You know what's funny? <laughs> then, then he throws oh, in Celtics versus. Let me stop you on the, uh, let me stop you on the Doris Burke thing because <laughs> Celtics fans don't like Doris Burke. I think. I, I think a lot of people think Doris Burke is jaded to whoever they. Uh, there's a lot of irritated people about Doris Burke. What's the Doris Burke thing with the Celtics? Do you guys think that they that she uh, goes over the top with that? I I, I think so. Yeah. Dor Doris Burke. I mean, I gotta at least think that like she knows who all the players on your team are. Like she mispronounces a lot of our guys' names. That's not Giannis. Like Bobby Porter and Cunningham on our team. We got Pat. Cunningham. Oh, really? <laughs> she, she fucks it. Like she's. There are days where I'm like, wait, did Hubie Brown's brain go into your head while you're like? Hey, man, don't 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 even don't even bring up Hubie. All right, Hubie's like 150 and he's still calling games. He's traveling around the world calling games. <laughs> they put him on the punch game. <laughs> that guy is like, uh, he's just. They prop him up at the desk. He's ready to roll. It's just like they put him at the broadcast booth and he's like, yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> we can get Hubies. But I'm ready. <laughs> Q also throws in Celtics versus the D Day Normandy invasion seas all day. So, uh, so, so there's well, that. I, that. Let's is... put it in perspective. I mean, I, I know that I sound like I'm, I'm talking about this team like they're a dominant team, but they are, right? I mean, yeah, no, they have been. No, for, they, they have been throughout the regular about season. a team that has like a top seven or eight point differential in NBA history. Like, what, what am I supposed to talk about a team that's top three in like offensive and defensive rating and top four or five or whatever it is in net rating? Like, if you wanna, if you want nitpicking, here we go. I'll give it to you. Ready? Defensive yeah, rebound. Hauser has a farmers yeah. in March. <laughs> yeah, I mean Hauser can't miss. He's shooting like 45, 50 percent from three since the All Star break. But he's he's by the way he's streaky. He could shoot twenty percent in the playoffs. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but defensive rebounding issue, right? 
Again, late game execution offensively issue. Porzingis' health obviously could be an issue. We can look at some of these things. Jalen Brown is shooting roughly 62% from the free throw line since February 1st. If it's a tight game, he's shitting his pants at the free throw line. I can see that happen. Um, the, the bench isn't as deep as you would love it to be, but they can go seven or eight guys, which is really all you need in the postseason to make a run. Tatum again, late game. Does he slow it down? Do they struggle with pace? That could be an issue. But, I mean, I would love to sit here and, and poke more holes in the team and tell you that, oh, well, this is a weakness and that's a weakness. But, frankly, they haven't shown many weaknesses this year. It, it kind of is what it is. And if you're going to, if you're going to beat the Celtics, it's going to be on the margins. It's not going to be, oh man, they they just they had a huge hole at the five position, you know, or or they. It, that's just kind of how it is. And maybe their their desire to shoot as many threes as possible, but I think they have that versatility to attack it. So they could fall in love with the three as well, and and that could be that could be an issue in the postseason if they stop making them like against Miami last year. And that is Nick Cattles. He hosts the Nick Cattles show. Follow him on Twitter at Nick C radio. And he dude, he, he really, he knows the NBA about as well as anybody I know. And he talks about the whole league. Also a big pro wrestling guy. If you're oh, yeah. into that, so, uh, follow Nick. If, if those are your things and, uh, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's just a good dude. Kelly. Good. Sammy. Good. Everything good out there in Foxborough. Nick. So we found out that Sammy got Lyme disease. What? Um, so that was a bit of a thing. And uh, but then they tested her, her levels. Apparently, it's not an active case. So she might have got it a long time ago. Thankfully, she has no symptoms and she didn't have any symptoms. So I guess we're good. But other than that, she's good. Uh, Sammy's his dog, by the way, Drew. Not his, yeah. not his child. Yeah. Just so we're, just so we're, just so we're clear. I, I, fi- I figured. I, I kind of gathered that. Okay. I just found out my kid had Lyme disease about seven years ago. So that was a thing. We Didn't he find really the tick in the head. Bullseye. He had this cool bullseye birthmark that kind of showed up last year. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how did I not see that through like the first five or six years of life? What, what, what did I, how did I miss it? He's been taking uh, no, hats, wearing flannels a lot. <laughs> Sam, Sammy's good. Uh, Kelly's good. I'm miserable. I don't have a job good. full time, so I'm miserable. All right. Um, but uh, you know, we're 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 fighting through, Rom. We're fighting through, my man. Getting by. I appreciate the time. I know it was last minute, and I know you weren't surprised to get a request from me last minute after us oh, having worked no. together. For you. No. <laughs> That, that's par for the course. So I, I looked at my phone. I said, what's Rami want? You, you want me to fly out to Milwaukee? Does he want me to do what, what's What is this? It, it's wanna, last second. You want to go to the bar tomorrow and watch the game? That's why we're not doing a preview tomorrow. I'm getting, I'm getting fucked up at six. You guys, you guys want to, you guys want to hang out? You guys want to go hang out at like six, the bar, go, go chill. Yeah. that's I, I totally expect it from you, Rami, but uh, look, man, no. anytime I could jump on and uh, talk to you, we don't we don't ever talk or text really anymore <laughs> every once in a while. But every now and then we'll you, check in on each other. Yeah. 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 I mean, look, uh, we might not text each other a ton, but if you want me to jump on a random stream yard on a what is it? Tuesday night, <laughs> Tuesday night, yeah. like 45 minutes. Sure. I'm down. I got to go have my pudding, though. Got to go have my snack. <laughs> what? I sound like you brown. I got to go. I got to go have my pudding. <laughs> I gotta go put my pajamas on now, okay, guys. So, uh, all right, buddy, I appreciate it. And uh, nor- right. normally, like we'd end the podcast right after I-, I let the guest go, and then I'd come back on and thank you again off the air. But I think we're gonna keep going a few more minutes. So I'll, I'll text you later and thank you. And I, I do appreciate. Uh, I it, won't buddy. take it personal, <laughs> Drew. Uh, I'd say it was a pleasure meeting you, but it wasn't really. Uh, yeah. So hopefully <laughs> next time you're not involved with this. Yeah, not <laughs> in the thing. See you, Nick. We'll talk again soon, man. See you guys. All right. There's Nick Cattles. Check out the Nick Cattles show. Follow him on Twitter at Nick C Radio. You uh you played nice. You played you played very nice. I with said Nick I was gonna tonight. play. I'm not gonna be mean to your friends now, dude. I'm gonna be meaner to more Bucks fans that come on here that are our friends. <laughs> like if I decide to like start like hopping in here on the goddamn stream yard thing and like have the link, they're gonna come in here and be like, the ball needs to run through Dame. I'm gonna scream. Like I'm gonna like I. I can't do it with people. Well, when that are was... we going to get Eric Smith on? Since, no, since Eric Smith is... <laughs> he's not pirate thing. He's not commandeering it. Like Eric's fine. Like he's not somebody. 
he was down there at the Deer District with us when we won the championship. Like he's he's an old school Bucks fan, so I can at least you guys Milton hate. You guys weren't part- playing so nice. I only showed a couple of the comments in the uh in in the comments section over there on YouTube. Uh, Taco Tack, what is that? <laughs> Tack these. He says this guy ha- haven't seen Middleton play once this year. Says Middleton is the difference maker. Celtics think they just need to stop Dame and Giannis. Uh, Q threw in more. He said, I can't wait for the C's to bust. They are so cocky and haven't overcome a single challenge all year. Look how they did when there was no, when there was Denver, Milwaukee, or the, I, I don't even know what that means, it's, or the I's, uh, C's can't handle pressure. Um, yeah, we were getting a uh, Nick, Nick, uh, Nick riled the people up a little bit mm-hmm. with the, the Celtics yeah. preview there. I figured having a Celtics preview was going to trigger a couple people, and that's all right. That's good. <laughs> I'm all for it. Like, listen, we're going to go to the bar tomorrow, Rami. You're going to come to the bar. Yeah. You're yes, gonna- I will join. Yes. So yeah, we're going to go. We're going to go. Uh, my girlfriend will be there a little bit later because uh, she's got to work slightly late. And mm-hmm. uh, she, asked, I was like, you might be driving my car back to your house. I don't know. Like, it it all See? depends. He's a Half- responsible young man. Half of our friends want to go to the uh want to go to the open mic, and I'm like, you guys, fuck, I'm not gonna be able to go. I'm either gonna be really what? happy drunk or I'm gonna be really sad drunk. But I don't need to go up at the open mic and then have my sets or my set start with, you know what I think? Like I don't need. We don't yeah, need there's that. no. That's 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 not a good look. You want you want to work there. You know you want to keep working there at the club. You know and that's that's not a good look. He was right by the way about. You're, do you always have your TV on while, no. while we're doing the podcast? Okay, because no. it is very serial killery. It is very Dahmer with the way that 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 the, the like the way the light flashes on your face and you're so close to the camera while we talk to you. It is very Dahmer what you got going on right now. I don't, I don't like it. Uh-oh. Uh oh. My network connection just dropped, so that's not good. Okay. Well, that's all right. We should probably wrap it up anyways. Um. So no, are we I- doing a show tomorrow? What? Should we do a show tomorrow? We should do a show tomorrow, right? Probably not, because I'm gonna be drunk after and before. Like, it's gonna be pushing it when I get off work. Okay, so, well, we'll see if we can put something together. And the whole reason I have this on is because it's Denver against Minnesota. That's what- yeah, I know, because you're a, you because you're a derelict. Uh oh, Drew just dropped out. Uh, that's all right. Oh, hold on. Oh, he's there back. Is. Okay. Yeah. No. After Anthony oh. Edwards killed John Collins last night. <laughs> oh my God, dude! Did you see that? That they was were a murder. Playing it. That, that was, we, was flashing. It was. Anthony we all Edwards. we all witnessed a murder last night with what Anthony <laughs> Edwards did to John. That was, dude. Dude, John Collins got a concussion from that. I was. That was the thing I was trying to mostly watch up there. I was like, wait a minute, what what happened with John Collins? Like it's like I was trying to figure out did Ant like hit him in the head? Was it on the way down? Did the ball hit him or something? No, you know, if you had if you had a ring light though, then we wouldn't even see the flashing from your TV. It, oh, would, it yeah. would block all that out. Well, anyways, and, uh, John Collins is living in the shadow realm with me in my serial killer cave. Yeah, right he might now. he uh, he might be RIP'd. We dude, might need to put flowers on that, John I mean, Collins' that, spot on the bench. But did you like that meme that I made about yeah. Wemby and Schroeder? That was pretty funny. Follow at Drew F is on fire. See more of his memes. And speaking of follow, man, the last few nights we've been doing these live streams, the, the numbers have been good. I see you guys watching. That's a nice big number up there in the left-hand corner of my screen. It's a much bigger number than the followers on YouTube, on Spotify, on Apple. So if you could just if you could just go over there and click follow, subscribe, rate, review, uh, tell a friend, do all the stuff that'll help us grow this thing. We appreciate the support, however you give it to us. And again, the last few uh, live streams have had a nice, a nice, healthy following, and we do appreciate that. But go over to uh, to those outlets, those platforms, and please give us the follow and uh, and all the other stuff. We uh, do you have anything else to add, Drew? I say we should do a live stream then, because you know you said you want to do more live streams. You know, yes, it's more people are watching when we do it. So we might as well do a. I think we should do a live stream Thursday, definitely talking about the box game. We could like, maybe oh, we could maybe jump on a couple times. We'll talk about this off the air for just a few minutes at a time as the game is going on tomorrow from right. the bar. That might be yeah. that might be that might be some good content. Yeah, and hey, everybody, if anybody wants to come hang out, we may or may not be going to promises over there in uh, in Walker's Point. So uh, if you want to watch a game with the Rami and Drew, show maybe go check us out. Maybe 
maybe over there at Promises. I'll be uh, until then, until the next one, I am Rami. He is Drew. This is Rami and Drew. This has been episode 35. We appreciate you listening, watching, and uh, and everything else. Thanks, you. And uh, thanks, you. Thank you. And we'll talk to you next time. All right.